All right, let's look at trig 1134 and take a quick peek at pages 11 through 14. Actually, 11 and 12, um, it's just a, it's a very simple formula. You don't have to necessarily understand it. You're just plugging in. And uh, to get the length of the side, you just multiply the uh, length of the radius, which they give you. <coughs> times whatever the angle measure is and that has to be in radians okay so on page uh, 12 at the bottom they have a few that they give you the angle you have to convert it into radians and then multiply it times the length of the radius that they give you make sure you include the units I guess they have the units already as part of the answer <clears throat> um, it is good to know that in the score key for this pace, they not only have the answer, but they show you the steps that they followed to get the answer. So again, if you are, if you're stuck, try a couple of them, go up to the score key, check how you're doing, and if you're, if you're not getting it right, you'll immediately get feedback on what you should be doing to, uh, to get the right answer, okay? So don't, don't, the score key is part of your teaching tool as you're going through trigonometry. All right, let's look to a page uh, 13 and 14. And um, do you remember in a previous pace we talked about sine, cosine, and tangent? Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Do you remember that? Say it with me, here we go, one more time. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And so the opposite over the hypotenuse is the sine, adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine, opposite over adjacent is tangent. Now with the, uh, um, what they're showing us here on page 13 is they give us a point on the terminal side. So we have an X and a Y value. And we're not gonna have to solve for the angle, okay? <clears throat> We can just find what the um, sine, cosine, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just by knowing the x and the y values. So if I have this, um, I'm looking at problem number 5 on page 14. So we'll do one together, okay, and just walk through the steps here. So obviously this is the x-axis, so we could say that x is 5, y is negative 12, okay, because that's in this up-down direction here. So the, the y is negative 12, the x is 5. What we need to figure out is what is r, okay? <clears throat> so the way we solve for that is by doing, that's this length here, we can do Pythagorean's theorem, remember that? Take this side squared, plus this side squared, and then you do the square root of the number that you get. So five squared is 25, 12, negative 12 times negative 12 would be 144, and then when you add that you get 169, and the square root of that is 13, okay? So the radius is 13. No matter whether one of these is positive or negative, when you square it, you're going to get rid of that negative. So the R is always a positive number, okay? <clears throat> so let's figure out what the sine is. Sine is Y, which is the opposite, over the radius. So the sine should be negative 12 over 13. The cosine is the adjacent, or the x value, divided by r. Well, x is right here. So 5 over 13, and then tangent is going to be y over x. So we're going to do the negative 12 over the 5. Okay? Was that easy? That's pretty easy, right? Remember, cosecant is just flipping these. It's the reciprocal of this. So now you can see what so cosecant is. You just flip it over, keep the negative with it. 13 over 5, 5 over negative 12, which we would just write negative 5 twelfths. 
And again, anytime we have a um, improper fraction, do not reduce it. Do not do decimals, okay? We don't do that. No decimals, no uh, mixed numbers. Leave it as a improper fraction in the reduced form, okay? So if it's like six eighths, yeah, do reduce six eighths to three fourths. <clears throat> But otherwise, you can just leave the fraction in the form that you get it. Okay, so again, do a few problems on uh, page 14 and then check your work in the score key. Make sure you're on the right track and hopefully that page will be rather easy for you.